Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Play Doom Eternal. Hope you're enjoying the series so far. We just shot out some eyeballs up in there, and now it's time to move on. We're getting pretty close to what looks like the end of this level. Uh, we still haven't been allowed to leave, and uh, yeah, more and more stuff has been unfolding. Lots of lore in the last episode as well, which is pretty awesome. Unless so we're going to get another upgrade or another uh, juice energy stick for our energy S-word. Get to the transmitter tower. If you can destroy it, the unrefined energy should be able to propel you into their world. The tower is held aloft by two enslaved titans. Break the chains, drop it into the well below. Oh shit, hello. Got him. Nice! Holy shit, you see his head explode? That was fucked. These guys love to counter my ass. A bit framey in this area, for sure. I blame 40 FPS. <laughs> or I blame uh, 4K, excuse me. All right, now we're at 60 over here. God, that feels so good and satisfying. Oh shit. Probably gonna get an arch vial as well, so we gotta be a little careful here. I'm sure that was a Baron I was supposed to kill or some shit, but oh well. I don't think I can actually get in there though. I don't think I can break these things until after I do this fight, so. Just gotta focus on these enemies first. Freaking teleporters. You know, I need a one shot for this guy. There you go. You must break the chains and destroy the Arjun Transmitter, then ride the enemy close to the 
assuming once we break one of the chains, yeah, we're gonna have another engagement. Or perhaps not. Let me just double check I didn't miss any... Oh, I did all... I did miss a bunch of secrets. Oh, God. I was mid-combat. There's nothing I could do. Uh... But the... Fuck. The gate's closed. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, what? Oh, I see it. Instant stagger mode, eh? Let's just make sure we did get the BFG ammo. Okay, we did. Uh, I guess it wants us to walk in. Oh my god! That's Necrovolt Part 2! I guess we're just gonna go right into the next episode here. Or, well, next campaign mission, I should say. Oh, he missed a cheat code! Son of a bitch. One cheat Oh yeah, right at the start. Forgot. Still did pretty solid, though, all things considered. Erdak! Necroval's energy conduit has transported you to Erdak, homeworld of the con maker. The souls of Earth's victims flow here, converted into a source of energy for a dying species. The con maker will stop at nothing to save Erdak, even if it means the complete consumption of Earth, prevent her from gaining control of the icon of sin, and put an end to her plans once and for all. instead of the art, but that's okay. Uh, Erdak, story of the Makers. This is Erdak, the home world of the Makers. A brief age anal analysis of the structure and architecture here indicates that this world is older than any other in our databases. Similarities uh, can also be drawn to multiple pan-galactic rele religions, indicating that the Makers' influence was not limited to Argent Denur and that over eons their influence has spread across the galaxy and potentially the universe. Some imagery as is akin to religious icons in the Orion Cygnus arm of the Milky Way, an area which includes Earth. The name Erdak is common tongue in the Maker language, but can be approximately translated to the word for paradise or heaven. There you go. In hundreds of different languages further cementing the theory that the Makers have had a religious impact on mortal beings for millions of years. Despite their seeming godliness, the Makers have a past. At some point in their ageless history, there is mention of the Father, a logical alien entity that endowed the Makers and their vast knowledge and technical ability. Analysis of Maker artifacts and scripture indicate that the Father may have been a singular being that split to form the Maker race, or instead transferred his incalculable power into the vast structure known as Erdak, which then birthed the Makers in perpetuity. It seems that the Makers, though exceptionally long-lived, eventually suffer some form of biological and mental degradation at which point they undergo a process known as the Transfiguration, wherein they allow a voluntary death and resurrection somehow tied to the Father. 
This process may have been complicated or damaged in the recent past. There are no records of how the father came to the Makers when it was first discovered, or if it had any physical form being the Makers. The first mention of the father is in regard to a building named the Luminarium. It was a temple of sorts where Makers would go to seek answers. The essence of the father was stolen by one of their own, but a Maker referred to as the Sef Seraphim. Who the Seraphim is, or what he did with the father's consciousness, is unknown. Records show that one day the Luminarium simply ceased to communicate, and that a deep scan of its databanks revealed no remaining trace of the entity. Erdak itself exists in an anchor state, utilizing highly advanced dimensional shift technology to allow a state position at a sub-quantum level. This essentially inverts their position in relation to Hell. Both planes of existence are fixed outside the bounds of the known universe, a lower or higher reality. The Khan Maker oversees all within Erdak and now utilizes Argent energy to prevent the transfiguration. So now Heaven uses the power of Hell, as we so surmised. <laughs> kind of crazy stuff. Also, I was going to change some settings real quick. I think, uh... Yeah, I have my field of view set all the way up. That might be affecting the frame right there. Apologies there. Hopefully this helps a little bit. To smooth things over. Uh, okay, no, it's just that book there. I figured they had a lot of holy stuff. Okay, I fought these guys before. Uh, I didn't really know what they were or how they worked. But they're like little servitors that have whippy arms like the snake dudes. And I guess that's a new way to teleport around. Interesting. This area is really unique. Oh, shit. We got some sword juice up in here. Although I probably won't end up coming back for the sword juice if I use it later. But I guess I can use one more sword attack if I so need. software why would you do this you bastards oh my god oh my god there we go I finally, I finally did it I think is I was holding W so ah uh, it messed me up son of a bitch well, I'm not missing anything Damn these platforming segments, dude. I get it, it's to show off the scale of the space, but fuck them. I don't need none of it. Made it. Wow, they give you a lot of time for that one. Uh, okay, there is apparently a question mark up top there. Perhaps there is something we must go check out. The grappable walls. Wait, oh, 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 I almost missed this. I am blind to everything. It's called M Bane uses the map simulator. Alright, for real though, how do I... How do I... Okay, so apparently we gotta get up there. Oh, I see now. It all makes sense. I got you. Man, the detail of this environment is really something else. Oh god, was I supposed to jump there? I guess so. Give it a, give it a moment. Oh. I didn't even see the wall here. Ow, you. Oh, it's another mastery coin. Sweet. 
Like I said, we're getting these like they're candy at this point. Stop the procession. We will not be able to control it! No! gets right back up. We're good. Okay, so that thing is massive, right? And you know what I've been saying from the very beginning? That, like, assuredly we've got to be getting teased here that we're gonna be able to, um, jump into one of those massive-ass mechs. Feel like, uh, we're gonna jump into a mech here soon. That's what I've been waiting for this whole game. They've been teasing it, man. Oh, shit. A chainsaw, a dude. You know what? You're getting chainsawed. <laughs> I love it. All right, now we can go grab a chainsaw over here. Oh, I already grabbed it. Whoops. Oh, whatever. It's fine. Hello, snake lady. Two shots, eh? It's all it takes. Yeah, I don't really understand the these servitor ladies. I'm not really. 100% on how they are function. If they're like actively blocking my shots or something like that. Oh shit. Fuck. Oh, okay, that works. Oh god. Somehow managed to make that guy explode into a bunch of money. Oh god, uh, okay. We are losing health by the droves. Oh, they, oh, they are money. Or, sorry, money. They're ammo. And, and Doom, uh, ammo is money. Let's be real. You know what? It's time. <laughs> I just figured. 
If we have three charges, we might as well use one, right? That's how I'm feeling. Okay, who's shooting at me? You dare try to do these transgressions against me, Doom guy? Hold on, hold on. I just want to make sure. Am I missing anything? No? Okay. These are those sarcophagus things, so I'm sure they're going to fall down the moment we use them. Oh, God. Woo! Made it. Did I get him? I got him. He's dead. The uh, environments in this game really are something else. Like they really knocked it out of the park. There's so much variety in this game that it never feels like you're in one place for too long. Oh god, I almost walked right off the side. Too excited. Uh, well, hold on. Hold on to your little potato butt. There it is. Desert into something or other. Oh, nice. Another codex as well. Icon of sin. Look at these. Dude, I love the freaking goat skull. The metallic goat. As it is written... In the prophecies of ancient sentinel scripture, the titans, towering elder demons of the infernal age would return, unearthed from their immortal slumber. The titans are believed to be harbingers of the end times, primordial forces of chaos and destruction. Born from the tortured spirit of the betrayer's son, it was by hell's unholy design that the icon of sin was given flesh. The fearsome titan forged from the essence of mortal suffering once bore a human soul, a soul now transmogrified and entombed within the still beating heart of its former self. The betrayer seeking to free his son from the eternal torment within the depths of hell made an agreement, a pact sealed by the black fates of darkness that promised to grant his son the chance to return from death. The son would live again, but not as a human. In hell's endless cruelty, the son was damned to become the icon, an inhumane existence bound only to its former humanity by the now disembodied, undying, mortal heart. Which, of course, Doomguy just stabbed super good and super hard. With a super knife! The superest of knives. Wait, what? Oh. I didn't even see that. Oh, hold on. Aha! <laughs> I felt it. I felt it. They always like to guide your eyes and then you have to you have to avert them. You have to look away. Um okay, you guys get to get hit by a grenade. Boop. Oh, hello. Pop. Pop. I just love the face of surprise when you do that shit. It's so funny. All right. Uh, perhaps there is a way. Oh, yes. With this giant box. That goes across the entire map. Perfect. Okay, here we go. What kind of bullshit are we going to deal with now? Uh, okay, let's see what kind of ammo we got. We got BFG. 
But uh, not that I feel too good about that. Okay. Let's see. Oh shit. Oh my god, did we do it? Did we do it? Yes! Literal gods. Last second too. Last second and we got it. Literal big old gods. Uh, apparently there's also an Argent sword hanging off the side on the beaten path, but unfortunately we're not going to be able to get it. Doesn't look like, but that's okay. okay. I'm sure we'll get another sword later. Um, for now though, we got to punch these bad boys. So it looks like this was actually just part of the regular quest that chained into being a secret. From which this becomes a nice little platform. Very nice. And of course, I'm sure I could go about these a little faster, but I kind of like the weightiness of the of the jumping. It feels good. Doom guy has a good weight to him. Oh my god, another mastery coin. Holy shit. I like how those ones just pop into uh, into ammo. I didn't know that going into that one Slayer Gate, but now it makes fighting them not so bad. Got the totem already, which is great. We're so close to getting the uh, the enhanced grenade launcher. I've worked so hard for this. Oh my gosh. Losing the regular shotgun on that guy is not the right choice, I'll be honest. Oh shit. Double barreled shotgun on the other hand though. Pretty solid. the guy. Hello. God, holy shit. Okay, hold on. Well, I say hold on, but there's really nothing I can do. There's no smaller enemies right now. Maybe perhaps this guy. Any sort of health right now would be greatly appreciated. If only I could aim. Oh my. Oh me. Oh my. Oh Bob. Oh, there's a codex up there. What do you know? Uh, and it looks like it shouldn't be too bad to get to, right? Oh, actually, never mind. I take it back. It's impossible. How are we supposed to get it, dude? How are we supposed to get the codex if the codex is too high in the air? Oh, there you go. That's how you get the codex. You just progress. <laughs> Con maker. There we go. We almost got all the lore here, too. Look at her. She's a really cool design. I like it. 
Every 10,000 years, the collective maker consciousness known as the Singularity births a con maker, a supreme being destiny bound to lead all of Erdak until the next con is born. The Singularity which contains the conscious soul data for every maker that has ever lived and died, processes and refines this data as a means of selective evolution. As hierarch of the conscious neural matrix, to which each maker is interconnected. It is physically impossible for a maker to refuse the collective order of shared consciousness and disobey a con. The system has functioned without error since the creation of Erdak until now. With the disappearance of the father, the makers are incapable of creating a successor to the Khan lineage, allowing the existing Khan to hold her claim to the throne indefinitely. So big error has happened. Big error. Oh, man. Oh, these are all the tutorials that we've not been looking at. <laughs> we should probably have looked at these at one point, but I turned them all off. I believe in LGR Gaming. He's a great reviewer. You should definitely watch his review of the, of the game as well. Because uh, I dealt... I mean, if you've been watching this entire playthrough, then watching his review shouldn't really spoil anything, even though he avoided all spoilers. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up there. Oh, so do a big old stretch. Probably gonna take a slight break before the next episode. If you guys have been enjoying the series, consider giving it a thumbs up, as well as uh, telling your friends about it. Really does help support the channel. I really do appreciate all the kind comments and everything like that. And I hope you guys uh, will stay tuned for the next episode when that comes out in uh, 24 hours or whatever. Less than 24 hours, because technically, if you're watching the episode, they're like 30 minutes long. So there you go. 22 hours, or 23 hours and like 20 minutes. There you go. Genius. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I'm Akvane101, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.